The old school poker world is gone. The Binion's horseshoe sign that used to hang over the entrance to the World Series of Poker now rests here in the neon graveyard. The old school poker world is gone and it died with Stu Unger. This is the story of the greatest card player that ever lived. In Stu Unger's short life, he went from the very top of the gambling world to rock bottom, which set the stage for one of the biggest comebacks in poker history. Now, almost two decades after Unger's historic third world championship win, we went to the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas and talked to the people who knew Unger best. His friends, the people he played against, and even the person who backed him in the 1997 main event. I always felt like he could almost see through the cars. He was a, he was a savant. He was never betting half of his stack. He was always all in, and that's that's just the way he lived his life, and that's what made him really so fun to be around. I always rate him as the number one player because, you know, from what I saw, to me, I've never seen anybody play better than this guy. He was he was head and shoulders above everyone else. When I started playing Paul Gerdes, I ever heard it's too hungry, it's too hungry, it's too hungry. Phil Hellmuth won the main event in 1989, and he's won 13 more WSOP bracelets since. When Hellmuth was coming up in the poker world, Stu Unger was at the top of the game. Over the next decade, Hellmuth watched Unger slide deeper and deeper into his addiction. He never had a chance. He never had a chance. I mean, here's a kid that was 14 years old, who was so good at gin at that age that he played high stakes gin matches on the East Coast. Mobsters put him into these games. He kept winning all the money. You're 14 years old, you're in a bar. You're winning all the money at playing gin. No one in the world can beat you. What, what, what kind of life is that? Where do you go from there? When the World Series of Poker was held for the first time at Binion's Horseshoe in Las Vegas in 1970, Unger, a teenager on the East Coast, had already established himself as the best gin player in the world. Ten years later, Unger walked into the Horseshoe Casino on Fremont Street and made history. Last Sunday I saw him roll up, late into the night in his beat-up truck. He mumbled and he stumbled as he walked the path, and he looked across the road and our eyes met. Ooh, who is that man? I see the devil in his eyes, but I don't understand. Ooh, who is that man? An arsonist, a larcenist, a crime of passion. Ooh, who is that man? He's on to me, I need to make some kind of plan. Ooh, who is that man? Maybe he just needs someone to call a friend. That's the winner. 27-year-old Stu Unger has again won the World Championship of Poker two years in a row. What are the odds on that, winning it? It's awful Six, big. Successive years. Very tough to win it. Got to be play awful lucky in key situations. 75 of the best poker players in America came in here. What's been your secret these two years? Maybe the most important person in Stu Unger's life was his mother. When his mother was playing seven card stud in just a very casual kind of nickel dime kind of a game, he was all of six, seven, eight, nine years old, and he would watch, you know, she was a very bad player, and he would watch the other people snicker at her and make fun of her. And he never forgot that. He never forgot people humiliating and laughing at his mother. And he couldn't take that. He was he was said that he used that drive and that that anger later in his life to, you know, destroy other people. I mean, you have to call upon... Nolan Dalla is the World Series of Poker media director, and he literally wrote the book on Stu Unger. Dalla was a reporter at the 1997 World Series of Poker main event, and he got to know Unger personally, interviewing him in Las Vegas in the year leading up to Unger's death. When his mother died, he went over to a friend's house, and the friend's name was Bernie, a, a gambling buddy of his. And he had never tried drugs, didn't, didn't really drink much. He said, hey, try this, uh, this Coke, it'll make you feel better. And you know, Stu, had, Stu had, had no idea what that would do for his, his life. And he'd snorted cocaine for the first time. Subsequently, when he was bored or took big losses, you'd go back to that fix. I think that's ultimately what destroyed him. He was a great no-limit hold'em player, but 
but he was really a bad gambler. You know, he probably lost four million playing golf. You know, but he bet horses as high as they would let him bet in the sports books. They let him bet the games as high as they would let him bet in the sports books. I mean, you know, he was just a big time gambler, you know. Phil Ivey's the only one I've seen that's like Stu Unger in terms of the biggest better at everything, doesn't matter what it is, with no fear about money. Every time he had money, he bet it off on sports. Really, Stewart was the king of action. Big action. I mean, he was the biggest better that there was back in the day. So he could never stay in money. It didn't matter how much he won. Had about two million in cash. Wow. And he was broke in three months. Just a stone gambler. Probably slept five hours a night. Probably just needed action, 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 action. You know, I think a lot of people find relief in drugs when they have fast minds. Yeah. He got married and she'd had a son and so he was very close to him. And when the kid was 17 years old, I think it was, he hung himself in the garage and committed suicide. And from that point on, I think just he went bonkers with the drugs. So how do you go from the 1980s where he's the king of the universe and then for the next six years, you have no money at all and gradually people forget about you. They lose respect for you. Yeah. And that's what happened in Stewie's case. I remember him coming up to me at the Bellagio and just a skeleton of a guy, you know, looking to borrow $300 or whatever. He was the closest I've ever seen to someone uh, who was alive, who didn't look alive. You know, he blew half his nose off with that cocaine and everything just before he died. You know, so many people tried to help him, Chip and Doyle, and just numerous times. Yeah. And Chip said, uh, Stewie, if you just go to rehab, you know, for a month, when you get out, I'll stake in every poker game that you want to play in, you know, kind of thing. After years of drug abuse, Stu Unger was a long shot to even enter the 1997 WSOP main event. He eventually got the $10,000 buy-in from his longtime backer, Billy Baxter. If Unger ended up winning, he and Baxter would split the $1 million prize 50-50. The way it come up, I went down to the horseshoe and I'm playing in a side game, a no limit deuce to seven game. And he just kept pestering me about putting him in. And I mean, I know he's a great player, but he's, I know he also does drugs and this, that, and that. So he finally caught me when I was doing good. And I softened up and I said, okay, I'm putting you in. Shuffle up and deal. That's what happened in Stewie's case in 97 on day one. He remembers what it was like 10 years ago to be on top. And now all of a sudden you're playing in the horseshoe and you're thinking, man, this is my element. He actually was still a bit hungover, wasn't in the best of shape, and not slept, wrinkled clothes, didn't look good. I'm telling you, he was horrible shape that day. Yeah. He looked horrible. And on the first break, I can remember clearly on the first break, I went up to him. And he's like, yes, Mike, he said, I can't make it. I won't make it through the day or something. I actually grabbed him by the shirt. And almost, I said, Stewie, you're broke. I said, you know, you got to get a hold of yourself. This is the main event. Just get through the day, get some rest. You'll be fine by tomorrow. Well, he not only got through the day, he got through it like in second or third chip position. Yeah. The next day, he was a completely new man. He was shaven, he was fresh, he looked good. He got a good night's sleep, and uh, from there, whoosh, he just dominated the tournament. Gabe spoke with Stewie last night after he won a seat at the final table. But I don't think there's any bigger story than the reemergence of Stu the Kid Unger, a gentleman who won back-to-back World Championships in 1980 and 1981. Uh, he's not a kid anymore, but Stewie, congratulations. Thank you, Gabe. I appreciate it. Remember 1980 when you first... Uh... The end of day three, which was a Wednesday night, and I was in the horseshoe walking around the cash games. I was talking to a lot of high-limit high players there. But here comes Stewie. And I'm not sure this, so sure this is a good thing, because yeah. he's got to play for the main event the following day outside in front of the ESPN cameras out on Fremont Street. And one of the fears was is that Stewie could have gone out and gone on a binge and then... Yeah, you never know, show up. Right. Which he had done, by the way, in 1990. In 1990, Billy Baxter also bought Stu Unger into the main event. Unger made it all the way to the final day, but he couldn't even make it to his seat when the final table played out. His friends found him on the floor of his hotel room, unconscious from a drug overdose. He was blinded out in ninth place. And I remember Chip Reese there just, you know, giving him a bit of the pep talk, you know, hey, tomorrow's your day. And Stewie needed that, 
reaffirmation so much. Mike Sexton gave him th that pep talk. It was Billy Baxter. It was Chip Reese. It was all the people that knew him and loved him yeah. that pushed him across the finish line. Leading the tournament at this point is Stu Unger. Stewie would have to come through 312 players just in the final event to win his third title. Good luck, everybody. This is it, the finals, 1997. He told me long earlier in the tournament, said, it's over with, I'm, I'm, I'm gone, nobody's got a chance. And Billy, I can remember, told me, he said, go out and bet more and Stewie, everything you can bet. Yeah. He wanted me to lay $1.40 against the field. And believe it or not, I could only get 4,000 worth of action. Everybody thought Stewie was gonna win. Stewie needs a deuce or a four. Stu's in a little bit of trouble here. A tray won't do it. Yes. Deuce. Deuce. Dewey wins the tournament. Stu Unger has won three World Series of Poker. Stu, let me ask you a personal question. I think I know you well enough to ask you this question. Do you think you're going to do things differently now? Well, I hope so, Gabe. There's nobody that ever beat me playing cards. The only one that ever beat me was myself my bad habits but when I get to playing like I was on stroke this tournament I really believe that no one no one can play play with me on a daily basis what happened following the win I mean what was well he was broken three or four days after the tournament he got half the money and he lost 500,000 on betting on sports that week Unger went into a complete nosedive. And when the World Series of Poker returned a year later and Billy Baxter offered him another backing deal, Unger couldn't even bring himself to play. That November, he passed away alone in a cheap motel in North Las Vegas. In his career, Stu Unger won an estimated $30 million gambling, but he died with only 800 bucks to his name. His friends were forced to take up a collection to pay for his funeral. You know, I really thought if he won that tournament, he'd come back. You know, we just all thought he might. I believe he not only would have been the biggest star on the World Poker Tour and in the poker world, whoever was in second place, he would have been up here, and whoever was in second would have been down here. If Stu Unger could have gotten to rehab, you just never know how great he could have become. It is okay to dream, it is okay to hope. Just because you say he probably won't change doesn't mean that maybe he's not that one in a million. I mean, he, he was one of a kind. And if anybody maybe would have had that ability, if anybody could have overcome the odds, maybe it was Stu Unger.